Welcome everyone to the latest episode of Jim and Java. I'm Jim Dempsey. Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Jim and Java where your fundraising questions are answered. And it is our goal to help you increase income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. So we're going to jump right in today. Before we do that, I want to just remind you to subscribe to this channel. If you've got questions that you want to ask, you can reach us at devfstrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java. Let's jump into our first question. Our first question today is from Paul in Connecticut. And Paul asks, what are the biggest obstacles for preventing someone from giving to a cause? Well, Paul, that's a great question. Thank you for asking that. Uh, the biggest obstacles really come down to understanding for the donor. They want to understand, first of all, what is your mission, what is your vision, and your values. They want to understand what kinds of activities, programs, and projects that you have. But the biggest thing is they want to understand where's their money going to go and the impact that it's going to make. Just as any investor would want to know the return on investment if they're moving into purchasing some stock or being involved in any investment, it's really important that they understand exactly how their money's used and the return on that investment. And when it comes to a nonprofit organization, that return on investment generally are lives changed, lives impacted. So they want to know a little bit about the before and the after. We all are used to seeing, especially in weight loss ads, the before pictures and the after pictures. Well, those kinds of things really do exist in the mind of a donor in that they want to know what was the person's life like before being involved in your organization. They want to find out what the person's life was after they were involved in your organization. If you run a mission in an inner city or a homeless shelter, or if you're trying to make a difference in the lives of young people in teens and after school programs, you're going to want to tell about and show pictures of or videos of what was that young person's life like before getting involved in your organization and what was that life like afterwards and it's always important to get it down to the individual person remember the adage that I've mentioned many times on this broadcast people give to people justified by the cause so we really want to get away from the organization as a whole and really get down to the person whose life has changed it's not bad to talk about things that the organization is doing, but use specific examples. Specific examples put a face to that changed life. They uh, are also able to get a, a better understanding of who that person is. Now granted, there are some organizations, especially if you're involved in very difficult uh, situations, like human trafficking is an example, you could not show a picture or show the name or tell the name of an individual whose life was was impacted but you could certainly talk about individuals like that person or even use very creative ways to market that such as blocking out the eyes of the person or having them talk behind a, a dark screen or a curtain and so there's a lot of ways of telling someone's story without actually showing their faces but it's important to remember the whole concept of impacting of, of an individual impacting another individual's life and there's a, a and there's a method that is very popular right now which is called story branding which really talks a lot about making the donor the hero in the situation and you've got a lot of ways that you can turn the donor into a hero with your organization. Just simply look for those ways that the donor can be the hero in that particular situation. So I would say to answer that question, Paul, the, the uh, greatest thing that, uh, that you need to have is the donor needs to have understanding. The greatest obstacle is also understanding. A lack of understanding when they don't understand the cause 
why your organization exists and why it needs to, uh, why, well, really why it's making a difference. Uh, those are the things that are going to be your greatest obstacles for people giving to your organization. Well, Paul, I hope that helped. Let's move on to our second question. Our second question is from Dave in Austin, Texas. And Dave says, how do I find the balance between designated and undesignated gifts? Well, Dave, that's a great question as well. And I would really say that the there is a, a challenge that many nonprofit leaders face, and that is, do they push for designated or undesignated gifts in what they do? Now, every nonprofit organization, financial professional would love to have undesignated money. And many executive directors or presidents of nonprofits love to have undesignated money because it allows them to use that money at any time for anything where the need is greatest generally. And it gives individuals who are leading nonprofit organizations a lot of freedom. Unfortunately, that the donor is really coming from a totally different perspective. The donor would rather give designated money because as someone who has been in development, in fundraising for the last 36 years, I've really found that the more specific we can be with the donor, the better you're going to have of the donor understanding the need that's out there, understanding how their money is used. And generally what we find is we tend to get larger gifts because there is a greater understanding of where the money's going and they know how that money will be used. Now, the way that you find that balance and that the way that it seems to work the best is using certain phrases and an understanding that I have used especially effectively within uh, when I when I do dinners and large group settings it's using the phrase things like this so you can give some individuals some very specific goals or ideas of how their money is going to be used but it doesn't necessarily have to be used by that within that particular thing it gives you the flexibility that all that is doing when you say things like this, it gives them at least a category. They know that you're going to be using that money on things very similar to this, but it, it gives you the flexibility to not have to spend it only on those particular things. So you can make it very broad. Our organization, as an example, targets young people, and we especially work with college students and even within that, freshmen because freshmen having an understanding of our organization uh, makes it very, very effective over the next three or four years that we can come alongside and help guide, coach, and mentor those young people. So when we present freshman-focused strategies, that allows us to be very broad in the kinds of projects and programs that we do. As long as it's targeting freshmen and as long as it is making a difference in the lives of freshmen itself, that gives us a lot of flexibility to be able to use that money. So in a sense, it is the best of both worlds because it allows you to target into one particular group but doesn't put you in a box and say it has to be this particular thing. And that doesn't mean that your organization didn't go in with every intention of using it for one particular thing, uh, but circumstances, situations change. We've seen that over the last year with the COVID situation and plans and objectives have changed greatly. And we've, we as an organization, as an example, um, had to target our money in a different way because the way that we want to target our money was not able to be used that way. So I, what I would recommend to finding the balance is, is using a phrase and presenting the concept of things like this. So it could be these particular things that may that the donor may be very passionate about, but it would also give the flexibility that we could do it, use the money for other things, but things very similar to this. Make sure you report back to those individuals and let them know how their money was used as well, because that really makes a big difference. So Dave, I hope that helped answer your question. Uh, that's the end of our broadcast for today. 
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being part of this broadcast. Jim and Java, we are here to help you increase your income and take your nonprofit organization to the next level. Just want to remind you that if you have got very specific questions, you can use our email at developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com or reach out, hit us up on Twitter at devfstrats Dev and use the hashtag Jim and Java. And please be sure to subscribe to this channel to watch Jim and Java and other effective videos. So as I always say, I wish you the best as you increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thank you.